p.m. says their share issue in January. Around 1,200 of Celtic's 10,000 shareholders were at the New Look Celtic Park for this morning's AGM and they got what they wanted to hear. Chief Executive Fergus McCann gave his backing to manager Tommy Burns, who's in Sweden with the Scotland squad, and McCann was quick to support assistant boss Billy Stark's promises that more money will be spent on players. We always have to put the development of the playing side first. Uh, we certainly want to develop Celtic Park. It has to be expanded because we need the space. We have the demand from, from season ticket holders. We can't get enough space for them and for match ticket holders. So we also need the park to develop revenue to help the team. So both go together. At the final whistle of the AGM, the people who own the club, the shareholders, seemed satisfied. It went very well, yes. I think all the questions were answered in a, in, in a very practical way. Very well, only good times ahead, I'm sure. The feedback I got, the, the vibes were always very good. I think people appreciate what we've accomplished in the last year, year and a half or so. And I think they're very confident we're going to go and grow the way that they're expecting. It's the first time I've seen pies and bowl roll at an AGM. That's your sport, Jen. <laughs> Thank you, Hazel. Well, nearly a thousand people have attended a packed meeting at Falkirk Town Hall, hoping to find the truth behind thousands of claimed UFO sightings over Bonnie Bridge. They come to hear Phyllis Schlemmer, who claims to be in contact with a group of aliens who think our planet is the most beautiful in the universe. Well, our beautiful science correspondent, or should that be our universal science correspondent, Ken MacDonald, beamed down to. They had come many of our Earth miles in search of the truth. The truth about the lights hundreds of people say they've seen in the skies over Bonnie Bridge. Where have you come from? Birmingham. To find out the answers. If there is any. This area is supposed to be rather, it's quite a hot spot for the UFOs, so just wanted to see if what the experts were going to say. The people in here have paid two pounds a time for the privilege of finding out what may or may not be in the skies over Bonnie Bridge. Many of them want to know the answers. Several of them think they know the answers already, and indeed one thinks he's met the people behind it. At the risk of being labelled a crime, I knew I was in touch with something, and I felt very peaceful and calm, and more better for it afterwards, you know. And what, what did they look like? They were sort of glowing, you know. In a poll, a third of the audience said they'd seen UFOs. They'd come looking for an answer to things they couldn't explain. Instead, they heard things they couldn't understand. Phyllis Schlemmer claims to have been kidnapped by aliens twice, and she says she receives messages from the Council of Nine, believed to be a group of extraterrestrials. The Council of Nine are nine beings pure energy light. They're not physical beings that say that they are nine principles of the universe. They talk about planet Earth being the paradise of the universe, the prototype for the paradise of the universe, the only uh, uh, planet in the entire universe that has individual free will. But some remain skeptical. There was supposed to be a meeting about Bonnie Bridge UFOs and the front I could gather was about anything but Bonnie Bridge UFOs. Many of the audience left no wiser than when they arrived. Many others had already voted with their feet. After all, they were missing the X-Files. Kenneth MacDonald, reporting Scotland, Falkirk. Well, now we'll see what the weather's going to be like in this uh, paradise of the universe, Heather. <laughs> That's challenging enough for me, thanks, Jackie. Good evening, and the temperature may be above average for October, but it was also quite literally blowing a gale at times today as well. And on the radar, those strong winds sweeping a fair number of showers across the country, one or two on the heavy side with even some hail reported at Lerwick. At the same time, on the eyes of our chart, a cold front heading eastwards, now travelling up towards Scandinavia. Out in the west, the next low pressure system developing, but that looks like skirting around much of the mainland during tomorrow and should only bring rain and strong winds to the northwestern fringes. So tonight eventually becoming dry, one or two showers persisting in the western and the northern isles, and then later tonight cloud increasing to bring some patchy rain to the outer Hebrides before morning. As for temperatures, once again down as low as 4 or 5 degrees Celsius inland, especially the central highlands and parts of the east, milder around the west coast and winds easing down slightly as well. 
Then tomorrow, while parts of the northwest coast and the Western Isles remaining on the cloudy side for much of the day with rain at times, and that rain becoming heavier and more persistent later in the afternoon. But elsewhere, it's very much a mixture of sunshine and showers, but not quite so many showers tomorrow. Some parts should stay dry, especially the northeast with the best of the sunshine there. And temperature-wise, well, a maximum of 18 or 19 even degrees Celsius tomorrow. That's up to a pleasant 66 in Fahrenheit around the Murray First Coast and through the Central Belt. Neither 14 or 15 in the northwest, and southerly winds will be strong again around these western coasts and in the Northern Isles. But looking ahead to the next four days, well, a slow moving front looks like keeping things rather cloudy on Thursday, Friday and even on Saturday with showers or longer spells of rain, especially in southern parts of the country. But that rain clearing away by Sunday and it's back to a mixture of sunny spells and occasional showers. But tomorrow's summary, cloudy at times in the northwest and the western isles. Elsewhere, it's a mixture of sunshine and showers. Jackie. Thank you, Heather. And now another look at tonight's main news story once again. The brothers of Christine Dinney, the prostitute murdered in Leith, have made an emotional appeal for prostitution to be legalised in order to make it safe for those who work in the sex industry. And that's all from Reporting Scotland for tonight. As ever, there's an update of all the main stories. Join me at 9.25. But of course, we're all back tomorrow, the usual time, 6.30. For me, Jackie Bird, good night.